Well, we're sitting in the studios uh, built by MTP Software, and that means this is Radio Entrepreneurs. My name again is Jeffrey Davis. I'm host of Radio Entrepreneurs and also uh, CEO, founder of Mage LLC, management consulting firm for leadership. Uh, our next guest, I think a first-timer, Dave Crouch, founder and president, 1024. And we're going to talk about what it's like to bootstrap a software company. Welcome. Thank you very much. Great. Great to be here. So, you know... Uh, software companies different than other companies so let's talk about it uh you know i've never run a, a company other than a software company so uh that's a great question um i'm sure there's a lot of commonalities right uh right. you know in terms of bootstrapping i think uh, time is different uh, probably yeah right. uh yeah there's uh, things change uh qu pretty quickly in the in the software industry um but uh you know things like cash and resources and um, sales and marketing are all, you know, pretty common uh, common issues and challenges that, uh, you know, no matter what company you're running. Well, you know, I, a long time ago, I was consulting its Sun Microsystems, mm -hmm. and someone said to me, we don't work like other companies. We work in dog years. Mm -hmm. What normal companies do in a year, we do seven years. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And meaning we do seven years within a year. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, you know, things are changing constantly. Um, you know, we, we lay out plans two, three years out. Um, but to be honest, beyond six months, it's always tough to tell, you know, what the market's going to do, what the business is going to do. Right. Um, so, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's something that we sit, you know, agile is a, is a, you know, a, a term that came from the software world. Um, we certainly are, you know, from a software development standpoint, are agile and then try to do that, uh, same focus and, uh, same mindset in just running the business. Right. So, uh, evaluate every month, um, make changes as, as need, need be, um, because things move pretty quickly. So you're utilizing a lot of, uh, some cloud-based software to do your work? Yeah. So our, you know, so what we've done is, uh, we're bootstrapping, uh, a software product called Slatwall. It's an e-commerce software. Slatwall. Slatwall. Right here. Um, oh, that's right. I could have read it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so for the last 10 years, uh, we've, use service revenue, so project revenue, to fund the development of the Slotwall product. Um, so uh, it's a cloud cloud-based e-commerce software. So companies use that to manage orders, products, accounts, transactions, inventory, et cetera, right? Typically selling online, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, so a web, a web, through a website, tr traditional kind of e-commerce. Um, so that, uh, yeah, we utilize uh, AWS pretty heavily, uh, Amazon's web services for all of our, our hosting. We're an e-commerce software, so we deal with security, uh, spend a lot of money and a lot of time on, on security around that infrastructure. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Slotwall is our, is our main, uh, main focus and main source of revenue. And we do sell that as a SaaS uh, product. Um, but, you know, we're, we, we toe the line between a uh, service business um, and the, the product business, the SaaS business. So uh, let's get into the Wayback Machine. Give me a sense of your career and how it evolved uh, so, to yeah, this I've, point. Uh, yeah, I, marketing and, and sales background. Um, have always wanted to get into business for myself. Um, I was uh, in the traditional kind of design uh, world, you know, selling design services to uh, to companies back in the early 2000s. A lot of people started talking about wanting to get online. Content management systems was a big, uh, uh, big push back then. So I went and found a partner I could work with and and co-sell their services as a partner. Uh, Within ten months, I, I went to go work with them uh, because that's really where I, I wanted to be and saw the uh, saw the opportunity. So I worked with that software development web development company for five years, five and a half years. Um, they went in a bit of a different direction, um, so I decided in two thousand eight to go on my own. And essentially, for the first two years, was by on my own selling the uh, selling the projects, managing the projects. And then in 2010, brought on two partners. So I'm I'm marketing um, marketing and sales background. I'm not a developer. Um, I brought on technical partners who are developers, and that's when we started to uh, to build the Slotwall product um, and kind of start this journey um, down bootstrapping that that uh, that product. So, is there, are there specific types of software companies that you like to work with, or size, or funded, unfunded? You know, give me a sense of the from a, from a client, per, the kind of types of clients that we work with. 
Yes. Yeah. So uh, most of our clients fit into kind of two buckets. One would be B2B manufacturers, uh, usually in the five to hundred million uh, range. Um, and one of the one of the reasons that that is is because B2B commerce is is complex. And the software that we've built, Slatwall, um, the the fr it's a framework that allows us the flexibility to deal really well with complex e-commerce uh, implementations. So B2B is one of those, right? You're selling direct, you might be selling through channels like distribution, y you might be selling through salespeople, um, multiple markets, multiple price points, it's really complex. So B2B uh, manufacturing or distrib distribution is one area. And then the other would be uh, consumer products that are also complex. So if you're just selling hats and t-shirts, we don't fit really well with that simple uh, model. But uh, for instance, uh, Scientific American Magazine is a client. So they're selling a physical good, the magazine, but also subscriptions, two very different things um, in the way that they're sold and the way that they're reported from an accounting perspective, customer service. Uh, so those, the complexity of that makes, and Slatwell fits really well in that model. Another one would be uh, Total Wine, the wine retailer. 200 stores uh, plus stores nationwide um, they sell wine futures so this is a product that's not even in their store yet or in their warehouse it's coming out a year from now or two years from now their in, uh, existing e-commerce system couldn't handle it because the SKU didn't exist in stock yet so they were doing it through spreadsheets and uh, phone calls and it was really uh, really manual and uh, prone to a lot of a uh, lot of mistakes we were able to uh, move that entire business online through the Slatwall platform. And again, because of the way we've built the framework, we're able to deal with complex uh, e-commerce situations like that and meet the, meet the needs, automate that process, and they've been able to grow that business uh, pretty significantly over the last two years because of that. Wow. Is it a very competitive business that you're in, or do you find what you're doing unique to you? Uh, well, we like to think we're unique, um, but certainly competitive. And they, they, those, uh, you know, so for, for us, one of, the, one of the challenges is we're a small company, right? So we're up against people like NetSuite, SAP, big, large, established. Uh, big ticket. Big ticket stuff. Big ticket. Right. So that's one end of the, the, the competitive market for us is that e traditional ERP, big ticket. Um, they try to do a lot of different things. Uh, the other is more traditional uh, e-commerce engines. Magento would be probably the most um, most common name people would hear, just purchased by Adobe uh, for a ridiculous amount of money. Um, so uh, big commerce is another one. Um, uh, Shopify would be another one, but maybe towards the lower end of the mar market. So we, we, uh, we kind of um, track right down the middle of those, those, two, um, those two areas. So we, uh, we, we are feature rich where we can compete against a, a NetSuite or an SAP, um, but without necessarily the cost, right, uh, to do that. And where um, a company might be working with uh, or looking at a NetSuite or SAP, and if you're within the functionality that they provide from a software standpoint, you're fine. The minute you get outside of that a little bit, costs uh, and time to implement go way up. And we're able to, uh, to handle those situations way more effectively and efficiently. So before we go, um, and we are talking to Dave Crouch, founder and president of 1024. We're at a party, I just meet you and I look at you and I go, what's so special about uh, 10, 1024? Uh, well, I think a couple of things. Um, we talked about the software a lot here, Slat, Slatwall. I think that's right. really special. At the end of the day, for me, as the, as the owner of the company, it, it's the team that we've been able to build. Uh, again, we're still a small team. We're 37 people. It's not uh, bad. It's not bad. Um, but uh, it, uh, I get up every day and get really excited about that team and the, and the kind of family atmosphere we've been able to, to build over the last 10 years. Um, that's, uh, that's probably most rewarding um, right. to, to me on a day-to-day -day basis. So Dave, if somebody was looking for uh, 1024, how would they find you? So t we're a web development company, so 1024web.com is our, is our website. Uh, and then the Slatwall product is slatwallcommerce.com. Uh, right. Well, that was uh, Dave Crouch, founder, president, 1024, uh, what it's like to bootstrap a software company. Thanks for being on the show today. And uh, we hope to see you again on uh, Radio Entrepreneurs. Appreciate the time. Great. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more stories.